Hi, I'm Sam Rieg from Carnegie Mellon University. I'm presenting the paper, Supporting Piggybacked Co-Located Leisure Activities via Augmented Reality. This work was done in collaboration with Erica Principe-Cruz, Melissa Powers, Jen He, Tim Chong, Yu Jang Tham, Sven Kratz, Ava Robinson, Brian Smith, Rajan Vaish, and Andres Monroy Hernandez. When people are spending time together, it's common for one or more of them to pull out their cell phones. There's a long history of HCI research detailing why and how it can sometimes be harmful for people who are physically together to pay attention to technology instead of to each other. On the other side of this coin, the HCI community has also had a lot of interest in how we can design expressly for co-located technology use. Recent work has advocated for augmented reality as a type of technology that's particularly well suited to deliberate co-located use. Co-located social AR might be intrusive if it asks people to learn something new, for example, the rules of a game. It might also have a high barrier to entry if it relies on platforms that aren't easy to obtain, set up, or use for a long time. One way to avoid these potential issues is to think about what people already have and what they already do, and to design interactions that work well, naturally, within that existing context. We call this concept piggybacking. In this work, we explore what it might mean for technology to piggyback on everyday leisure activities that people engage in when in their personal private spaces with other people or with their pets. We ask three research questions. How might we foster meaningful, co-located interactions with technology? What is possible, desired, or valued in technologies designed to piggyback on activities that people already do together? And what are the pitfalls of using technology to piggyback on existing experiences? Using Snapchat's Lens Studio, we designed three AR apps that piggyback on existing day-to-day co-located leisure activities. Because this was an initial exploration of piggybacking, we wanted our lenses to piggyback on day-to-day -day activities that were common and easy for us as researchers to observe. Our first piggybacking setting of choice was lull moments between friends. People sit together and show each other photos, chat, or simply coexist, we wondered, is there some way to use AR to enhance moments like that without detracting from them? We designed Mindful Garden, which piggybacks on lull moments by augmenting them with a short guided meditation practice. Players sit together, ideally on the floor, and use Snapchat's connected lenses feature to start a shared session. The lens projects AR grass onto the ground and prompts the players to look around and view the grass. It then instructs player one to close their eyes and let their partner guide them through a breathing exercise while providing player two with the guided meditation prompts. Then the players switch roles. Finally, they do the breathing exercises together. AR flowers grow during the session. At the end of the session, players can pan their cameras around the space to view the newly planted flowers. Since people have spent a lot of time hanging out with their pets during the pandemic, we designed our other two apps to piggyback on playtime with cats and playtime with dogs. If you've spent time with a cat, you may understand why cats have earned the reputation of creating chaos and doing what they want when they want. Compersers plays into this well-established personal brand in that it's designed to piggyback on cats' natural movements. In this app, as a person films a cat interacting with their physical environment, the lens triggers musical pitches that correspond to the cat's movement. At the end of the session, the player can download the masterpiece that they and their cat have created together. Pet Pet is designed to piggyback on human-dog interaction, specifically on treat giving, cuddling, and fetching. As a person and a dog engage together in these activities in view of the camera, they also nurture a small augmented reality creature that grows and plays along with the real life dog. In designing the three apps, we followed guidelines from prior work that explored the broad and open-ended design space of playful co-located interactions. Specifically, we leveraged touch, humor, and familiarity. 
With our new apps in hand as a vehicle for investigating our research questions, we conducted a remote user study. 41 people and 19 animals in total met with us on a video call to play one of our three apps. We asked participants to play for however long they'd like to and let us know when they were ready to chat. Then we conducted semi-structured interviews with the humans to learn about their experiences and impressions. Through our study, we identified both opportunities for and challenges of AR apps that piggyback on day-to-day -day moments. First, our participants wanted their experiences to last beyond the brief moments during which they actually happened. They wanted to make and save mementos and to return to the same augmented settings and environment states again and again. One participant said, I'd probably send it directly to people if I wanted to crack them up or share. This is what my cat was up to today. Another said, I would like it if it wasn't just a one-time thing because I feel like everyone could get into it. Like, hey, the more people participate, the better, bigger your garden grows, and then over time, people can visit it. Second, our participants wanted their experiences to reflect them in some way. They wanted to be able to personalize facets of the augmentation so that they would represent their identities and their relationships. They said they wanted to see a statue or something, a bird that we both see, then we can know for a fact that it's the same garden. And somebody else said, not all dogs look the same. If it shows up looking like a golden retriever and I'm playing with my completely black total mud of a dog, it's not going to look the same. Third, when it comes to augmented reality and to structured shared experiences with phones, people are used to playing to win. Participants brought this idea to our study, and sometimes it got in the way of their understanding of the type of experience the app was aiming to facilitate, or what they were supposed to do with it. This was most prevalent in Mindful Garden, where someone said, But why is it a lens? He didn't want anything from me. I will never be like, let's open Snapchat and open a lens to help us meditate. These are just a few of our insights. Please refer to the paper for the full list. From these insights, we identified a set of design implications for supporting piggybacked co-located leisure via augmented reality. First, calibrate expectations and mood by setting the tone within the app. Think about those first few moments. How will the user know whether it's something to play or something to experience? Whether the vibe is relaxed or active? Whether the interaction is cooperative or competitive? Designers can use on-screen features like instructions, words, music, and visuals to set the mood for what they envision happening off-screen. Second, design ways for people to personalize AR experiences and make mementos through which those experiences can persist. In future versions of the apps I talked about today, this could look like location-based gardens, pet pets of the same breeds as their real-life canine counterparts, or musical genres that match cats' moods. Again, these are only a few of our design implications. You can check out the full paper for the full list. We're grateful to our participants, both human and not, for their time and insights, and to many colleagues from our time at SNAP Research for their feedback on our apps. I also thank NASA for funding. Thank you for watching. You can visit letsplayirl.com to try out Mindful Garden, Compersers, Pet Pet, and more co-located AR apps.